season to remember. A complete review of the 1989 Canadian Football League season. July 12th, the CFL opens its 72-game schedule in Toronto's spectacular new Sky Dome. The Argos faced Hamilton and started things off with the thrill. Gambling for the second time in the game on third down. Kennedy has it, he kicked it. Gill, the thrill, Fennerty gallops 60 yards to give Toronto the lead. But the arch-rival Tiger Cats were intent on spoiling the home debut. Rookie Sonny Gordon scores on the interception in a 24-15 Hamilton victory. Out west, Calgary sprinted to an early lead on Ron Hopkins' 100-yard kickoff return. But the Saskatchewan Rough Riders countered with last-minute heroics. Third and ten. And he throws it up, underneath it, touchdown! Don Narcisse. Narcisse scored his second TD of the game, and with time expired, place kicker Dave Ridgway sealed a rider victory. Against BC, Roger Aldag performed in his 200th consecutive CFL game, and Tom Burgess dazzled with five touchdown passes, including this one to a rather unassuming recipient. Burgess to Bobby. Jurison, an unlikely receiver. Talk about using all the weapons. He carries Rick Ryan into the end zone. Winnipeg Blue Bomber running back Tim Jesse spins and weaves, scoring four touchdowns in a win over Ottawa. The scrambling abilities of BC quarterback Matt Dunnigan were on display against Calgary. His Lions would lose, but not before showcasing 1988 MVP David Williams. The Tracy Ham led Edmonton Eskimos wouldn't lose often. Seven turnovers sealed their fate against the Argos. Tracy Ham dumps it off, intercepted. This will be a touchdown for Rodney Harding. The skies opened up over Taylor Field in Regina. When all was clear, sophomore Wally Zatilny and his 66-yard punt return gave Hamilton its best start since 1969. The Lions and the Tiger Cats faced off at a 44-38 shootout. David Williams nabbed three Dunnigan TD passes, and Tony Champion was outstanding with two TDs and eight receptions. Hamilton came away with two points, and BC's Larry Donovan came away without a job. On August 7th, Ray Elgard became the Riders' all-time receiver. Austin puts it up, complete. Elgard, finally the record. Joe Gallat took over behind the B.C. bench and witnessed the Lions fall to 0-5. Rookie Darrell Wallace, also a tailback running back tonight, and there he is, a Hank Elistic to beat, and he'll do it. They'd get their first win the next week, Darrell Wallace with the honors. Barrett is going deep, yeah. looking for Willis. Yeah. Goodbye. Calgary recorded its third win in handing Hamilton its first loss. The Blue Bombers' Michael Allen equaled the CFL record with his fourth career fumble return TD. Big rush, and the punt is blocked. And it'll go out of bounds, or will it? No, it stays inbounds. Michael Allen has a touchdown. If he can pick it up, he does, and he's in the end zone. And Toronto's Gil Fennerty would pitch in with wins against Winnipeg and Ottawa. And Jimmy Fennerty, touchdown. Tom Burgess again clicked with five TD passes, but so did Mike Kerrigan. Yes, it was shoot 'em up time in Hamilton once more as the Tiger Cats outgunned the Riders 46 to 40. Kerrigan to the end zone, touchdown, champion. Kerrigan wants to kill me long, and he has it. And he'll score. Burgess, lots of time over the middle. Fairholm is open, and he will score. Kerrigan looking for a champion. Touchdown. Ottawa tried desperately for its first win of 89. The Lions won instead, aided by two points on the CFL's first ever scoring from a convert return. They won't get a chance for the point after as the snap gets away from Shimmer. Uh-oh. And it's still alive. Uh -oh. Remember the rule in the CFL. Alondra Johnson 
Running for the end zone. Robert Reed's after him. But he won't get him. Edmonton began the month with its eighth win in the Labor Day Classic from Calgary. In the return match four days later, fullback Blake Marshall rushed for three TDs in a game kept close by Stamps quarterback Terrence Jones. Gold sees the rush immediately, gets away from it though, fires to the end zone, Graham is in the air with a touchdown. The magical Matt Dunnigan left the Rough Riders spellbound in a win over Ottawa. Parker fumble, Dunnigan picks it up, he can throw it, that's what he'll do, touchdown. Albert Brown on this return with a hole. This 87-yard punt return enabled Saskatchewan to end a four-game losing streak. Touchdown. Ottawa's Steve Goldman experienced his first win as head coach, a 40-23 victory over Hamilton. Out from the target. Driving kick. Thurman takes it at the 20. He's got a seam. He's on. Look out. Winnipeg quarterback Sean Salisbury passed for six touchdowns and set a Blue Bombers record with an incredible 454 yards passing. Salisbury for Perry Tuttle right on target and Tuttle. It's a foot race. Can Belanger get to him? Belanger actually took Gooch out of the play as Tuttle goes in to score. BC kicker Louis Pasaglia became the CFL's all-time field goal leader with his 465th. The game against Winnipeg was a hard-fought contest. Jones with the interception, and then Eric Streeter sends it to overtime. Donegan puts it up, looking for Streeter. In overtime, the Bombers look to Mr. Clutch. Salisbury with time. Puts it up, going long. He's got a man open. Touchdown! James Murphy! It wasn't as exciting for Winnipeg the next time as Paul Osbaldison's single was the margin of victory for Hamilton in the league's second overtime game. The Eskimos were on a five-game win streak when slot back Craig Ellis had a career day. Ten passes for 202 yards. It wasn't enough, though. Kent Austin and Jeff Fairholm derailed the Edmonton Express 48-35. Dean Dorsey's club record seven field goals and Gerald Alphin's fifth consecutive 100-yard receiving game powered Ottawa to its second win. Edmonton discovered a new gizmo. His name, Tony Hunter. Hunter still on his feet. He's got lots of blocking. But the league's real sensation was Tracy Ham, who set a quarterback rushing record with 150 yards. In the win over Hamilton, Reggie Taylor became the season's first 1,000-yard rusher. And Edmonton's daring defense continued to dominate. Matt Dunnigan had a tough first half against Saskatchewan. Albert Brown's 96-yard interception return for a touchdown inspired Dunnigan's Lions to a last-second victory. Final play of the ball game. Who will try and put it in the end zone? Dunnigan will keep, he scores! The BC Lions have staged a remarkable comeback here at Taylor Field in Regina. In Ottawa, Calgary's highly touted quarterback Terrence Jones scored two touchdowns, including this one for 49 yards. It was also a chance for a veteran lineman to steal some limelight. Jones, a screen for Petros. This could be a first down. He lost the ball. Still loose. Picked up and a chance for Blanchard to redeem himself. He's down to the two. A few of the Stampeders stopped in Winnipeg to watch Tank Landry's ex-team defeat the Blue Bombers on Mike Clemens' 25-yard punt return TD. Cameron just got it away, and catching it on the run is Mike Clemens. He may take it in the end zone. He does. Eric Streeter set a BC club record with 14 receptions and 234 yards. Speaking of records, Kent Austin had 492 yards in passing. Austin is going to pass. 
He's got Narcisse wide open. Good call by Saskatchewan. And Narcisse is end zone bound. What an unusual play. Rob Bresciani will go for a touchdown. Uh, unless Hopkins can catch him, and he can't. Joe Farragelli and his Eskimos clinch the West with their 12th win. And deep into the end zone. Touchdown! Danny Barrett and Larry Willis connected for three touchdowns as the Stamps blow out BC 51 to 11. Defense was the story at the Hall of Fame game in Hamilton. The Tiger Cats eventually won, but not before James Murphy recorded his sixth straight 1,000-yard season. Here's a pass to James Murphy on first down. Murphy breaks free. Touchdown, Winnipeg. Saskatchewan's Tim McRae broke the 1,000-yard rushing barrier along with Toronto's Gil Fennerty. Fennerty also showcased his pass-catching talents in a win over B.C. Keith Gooch showed us his talents, too. Tracy Ham's leadership and running ability continued to inspire the Red Hot Eskimos. Their 14th win against the Blue Bombers tied the CFL record for wins in a season. Junior Thurman's touchdown strengthened Calgary's hold on second place in the West. And the Ottawa Rough Riders tuned up for 1990 with two late season victories. October 29th was certainly a milestone day in Hamilton. The game against the Argos featured several exciting plays, including Tony Champion's two touchdowns. But the day will be remembered for two events. Gil Fennerty breaks Bill Simon's Argo rushing record, and it was the day Tommy Joe Coffey's record fell. Twelve-year veteran Rocky DiPietro established a new plateau of CFL excellence, his 651st career pass reception. In November, Earl Winfield returned to form for the Cats' fourth straight win over the Argos. Winfield gets around the corner. He's gone. Touchdown, Ty Cats. Paul Osbaldiston established a new CFL record, 233 seasonal points. Last year's Western finalists wouldn't make the playoffs, but the BC Lions pulled out all the stops in a 46-21 win over Calgary. Louis throws a pass. Lecky catches it. Don't dare drop that one. Scott Lecky and the BC Lions are showing just how loose they are. Lecky might go all the way. He could go all the way. Gracie hand for Tom Richards, wide open touchdown. Edmonton set several CFL records in their dominating 16-2 season. Tracy Hamm became the first quarterback in pro football to rush for more than 1,000 yards in a season. The Western semifinal. The Stampeders lead 6-3 when Junior Thurman's interception leaves Calgary in excellent scoring position. But Danny Barrett and his offense can't capitalize. Barrett comes right back for Marshall Turner. This one is intercepted in the end zone. Harry Skipper grabs the deflection and he's still on his feet looking for some blocking help. Look out! He needs some help! I think he's simply going to run out of gas down at the 12-yard line. Harry Skipper's 102-yard interception return leads to a Dave Ridgeway field goal, and then the Riders go in front 20-6 with two Tim McRae touchdowns. In the third quarter, Barrett finds his favorite receiver, Larry Willis. The gain is 58 and sets up Calgary's first major. Denard Martin this time will score. Larry Koharich and his Stampeders trail John Gregory's Rough Riders by seven. 
Saskatchewan's relentless defensive pressure eventually forces starter Danny Barrett to leave the game. His replacement is Terrence Jones. Twelve and a half minutes remain in the game. 23-19 Riders. Ball at the 36, Terrence Jones. Looks downfield. Throws deep for Zeno. He's got it. Two. Mark Zeno's 36-yard touchdown gives Calgary the lead. It's not over yet. Saskatchewan has the ball at midfield. Here's the draw play. Brian Walling, big run. Gone. He's going to score. Brian Walling, a late addition from Edmonton, becomes the playoff hero. A 50-yard gallop by Brian Walling. Oh, yeah. Saskatchewan wins 33-26 and earns a trip to the Western Final. Mike Riley and his Bombers travel to Toronto to face Bob Obilovich's Argos, both teams with identical 7 and 11 records. The defending champions were without last year's Grey Cup quarterback, Sean Salisbury. Instead, it's his understudy, Lee Saltz, who keeps the Argos off balance. First and 10, Blue Bombers at the Argo 13. Saltz in the pocket, forced out all night to throw, gets it away. Jeff Smith wide open, touchdown Winnipeg. Toronto starter Rick Johnson failed to move the team. The call went to third-year veteran John Congemi. Winnipeg's defense didn't treat Congemi any differently. Middle linebacker James West returns the interception 25 yards. The Argos' total offense in the first half was only 66 yards. Toronto's defense kept the game close. Glenn Kolka and Gerald Bayless get through to Salts. But it's the Bombers' defense that puts the game out of reach. Harper to punt. We've said that many times, and it's blocked by Michael Allen. Paul Klatney has a touchdown. Winnipeg leads Toronto by 19. Game MVP James West and the East top defensive player Greg Battle pour on the pressure. Conjemi finally puts the Argos on the board. Here's Jeff Boyd with his first catch of the game, and he will score. Touchdown. The touchdown is too little too late. Rick House gets the insurance marker and seals the victory in the Eastern semifinal for Winnipeg. Final score, 30 to 7. The game would be the last for Bob Obilovich as the Argos leader. In the Western final, the heavily favored Eskimos and their hambone offense get things rolling on their first drive. Here they come again to the ball. It's Taylor, first carry of the game, gets him a touchdown. A Jerry Corrick field goal puts Edmonton in front 10 to nothing, but the momentum changes early in the second quarter. Ham has it dropped, and the ball is picked up by the Riders. Bye-bye. Albright, touchdown. Saskatchewan fights back, just when the Eskimos look to be running away with the game. Quarterback Kent Austin strikes quickly to Ray Elgard, and the Riders are up 17 to 10. The Eskimos turn to their ground game. The league's top rusher, Reggie Taylor, bursts through the line for a gain of 51. But a frustrated ham fails to move the ball. The Esks settle for a field goal. Late in the second quarter, quarterback Kent Austin is hammered by the CFL's top defense. Stuart Hill gets the interception. Austin is hurt, but Tom Burgess is ready and willing. 17 to 13, Riders at halftime. And now the Eskimos are just inside the Rider 10, trying to regain the lead. Ham on the option. He keeps it and scores. Ham's touchdown gives Edmonton the third quarter lead. Tom Burgess accepts the challenge. Second down, and they're back to the 10 they needed initially. Burgess throwing a deep man is there for a touchdown. Jeff Fairholm. A touchdown here could make it 11. And I think it would be a real lick if the Riders could get that far ahead. They go to the end zone to Elgard. He's got it. Touchdown, Ray Elgard. Burgess leads the Riders to one of the greatest upsets in CFL history. The 9-9 nine nine Riders defeat the 16-2 Eskimos. 
final score, Saskatchewan 32, Edmonton 21. The Riders and their fans make their first cup appearance since 1976. The Eastern final in Hamilton. Quarterback Lee Saltz continued his impressive play. The Bombers go out in front early in the first quarter. Slot back Rick House gets his second touchdown of the playoffs with this 87-yard reception. The Winnipeg aerial attack resumes. Perry Tuttle's 40-yard gain brings the ball to the Tiger Cat 11. But Trevor Kennard, Winnipeg's extremely consistent place kicker, is having an off day. Kennard misses again, his second straight attempt. Wide receiver James Murphy comes back with a 56-yard gain. That gives Kennard another try from the Hamilton 31. The result will be the same. With the Cats down by four, Coach Al Bruno makes a change. Todd Dillon, the game starter, is out. Mike Kerrigan is in. First and goal from inside the 10, 352, remaining in the third quarter. Kerrigan throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Zatumi! Zatilny's touchdown is all the inspiration the Tiger Cats need. Their defense, traditionally aggressive, goes to work. In the fourth quarter, Pete Giptopoulos intercepts Saltz. That sets up a Paul Osbaldiston 37-yard attempt. It's good, and the Tiger Cats are off to Toronto with a 14-10 victory. The Sky Dome in Toronto is the site for the 77th Grey Cup Championship, featuring the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. from across the country have frolicked during a week heated with Grey Cup fever. It's been a fun time for players from both teams, especially Saskatchewan's birthday boy, Glenn Suter. Watch out. I just picked this up. See you, bud. I'll see you back in the room. I want names. Okay, joke's over. Joke's over. Okay. Hamilton surprised a few people with their impressive 12 and 6 record. A group of seasoned veterans gelled nicely with a young crop of potential stars. It's the team's fifth championship appearance of the decade. Their experience would be a factor. Saskatchewan is definitely this year's Cinderella team. The Riders only performed 500 football this year, but in the playoffs, their explosive offense has proved to be the difference. You stop the pass, you stop the Riders. 60 minutes of dedicated football. At the conclusion, the glory of winning or the pain of defeat. <laughs> Referee Dave Ewell signals the start of the 77th Grey Cup Championship. Hamilton's Derek McAdoo returns Ridgeway's kickoff to the 38-yard line, where quarterback Mike Kerrigan, starting in his second Grey Cup game, will scrimmage the ball. The Tiger Cats start conservatively. Derek McAdoo up the middle. The gain is seven. Al Bruno, his fourth Grey Cup as head coach. McAdoo gets the call again. His four-yard plunge is enough for a Hamilton first down. An incomplete pass leaves Kerrigan with a second down attempt. Chuck Klingbell, in his first season with the Riders, drops Kerrigan. Hamilton is forced to punt. Kent Austin gets the start for Saskatchewan over Western final hero Tom Burgess. Both quarterbacks have excelled this season, making the choice a difficult one. 
Boston's first series is unsuccessful. The Cats force two incompletions. Terry Baker punts on third down. Hamilton has a healthy Earl Winfield back as return man. Winfield has returned six punts for TDs in his CFL career. He brings this one back 20 yards before Baker knocks the ball free. Winfield's the last one to touch it, and it's ruled a Hamilton ball at their 54. Kerrigan finds sophomore Wally Zatilny on the out pattern. The gain is 13. Then it's over the middle. Slot back Richard Estelle. McAdoo is stopped on second down. That brings the league's top scorer into the game. Paul Osbaldiston connects from 42 yards out. The Tiger Cats take the lead. Kickoff is fielded by Tim McRae. He returns it to the Riders 35 before Frank Robinson brings him down. The coaches have witnessed a defensive struggle in the early stages. Austin on first down. Bootleg. And he elects to run the ball. Daryl Corbin limits the game to six. by McCray and Austin lead to a first down in the game's first turnover. Ball tipped and picked off. Robinson at midfield. First turnover of the game goes in Hamilton's favor. The interception leaves Hamilton to scrimmage on the rider 49. One of the key confrontations on this day would be the matchup between the league's top receiver, Tony Champion, and veteran cornerback, Harry Skipper. On the first down, Skipper comes close to an interception. Champion against Skipper. They battle all game. On the next play, Hamilton receives a major scare. Champion, after picking up 18 yards and a first down, is wrestled out of bounds by Skipper. Champion had over 1,600 yards in receptions in 1989 and was clearly the league's dominant receiver. The Kerrigan to Champion combination terrorized defensive backfields throughout the league. The early diagnosis is severely bruised ribs, possibly cracked. The importance of the game overshadows the pain. He'll be back. Two Kerrigan incompletions brings Paul Osbaldiston in for the second time. This is a 38-yard attempt to make it 6 to nothing, And this one is good. Osbaldiston, who kicked six field goals in the 86 Grey Cup game, builds on Hamilton's lead. Kent Austin gets a few pointers. While 290-pounder Miles Garrell gets a breather. Austin has yet to complete a pass. He makes his first one a 19-yarder to Mark Guy. Austin's next attempt is incomplete. On second down, a pass intended for Don Narcisse is knocked down by cornerback Lance Shields. Third down, Terry Baker punting from the Cats 48 sails one into the end zone. The Rough Riders are on the scoreboard with a single point. Mike Kerrigan. The often chastised Hamilton quarterback has had to compete for the starting job in every one of his four years with the Cats. There's no doubt now. After a Tiger Cat first down, Kerrigan spots Winfield on the out pattern for a gain of 15. On second and seven, Kerrigan tests his scrambling abilities. The Saskatchewan pressure is intense, but he manages to find Winfield open for a first down. On the next play, one of the game's most spectacular catches. Richard Estelle makes a one-handed grab for another first down. Then, from the 13-yard line, Kerrigan looks for a familiar face. Up to champion, touchdown, he returns for a score. <laughs> 
Tony Champion led the CFL in 1989 with 15 TD catches. With his ribs heavily taped, he pushes off Harry Skipper for the game's first touchdown. All right, Bobby, let's go. Come on. The convert is good, and Hamilton leads 13-1. The Riders charge back. Tim McRae takes the kickoff and dashes for 49 yards. The return takes Saskatchewan into Hamilton territory as the quarter ends. The strong defensive play continues in the second. Ronnie Glanton sends Austin to the turf. Derek McAdoo can't find room. The Riders begin an attack from their 48. Austin hits the West top Canadian Jeff Fairholm for 22. Then Austin looks deep for the other slot back, Ray Elgard. But safety Jim Rockford shows his defense. On the play, all-star cornerback Lance Shields is injured. A tough blow for Hamilton. Austin goes right back over the middle. Elgard to the Cats, 24. And Austin in completion brings on second down. Third-year wide receiver Don Narcisse splits Hamilton's secondary. The gain is 19. Austin sets his offense on Hamilton's five. First and goal. To the end zone, wide open, Elgar, TD, Saskatchewan. Ray Elgar, perhaps the league's most underrated receiver, positions his six foot three inch frame perfectly on the corner pattern. Hamilton's secondary is in disarray. Austin was brilliant on the drive, completing six of eight passes. Ridgeway kicks off with the Riders trailing 14 8. Derek McAdoo gives Hamilton great field position, returning the ball to the 53. The Hamilton offensive line averages over 270 pounds per man. Their size and strength will play a big part in the next drive. Kerrigan has time to find Richard Estelle over midfield. Rocky DiPietro is the next target. Five Rough Rider defenders finally bring him down at the 30. Champion in completion leads to second down. Rush on Kerrigan over the middle. McAdoo. Touchdown. Derek McAdoo, the speed back from Baylor. His hard driving style has been a huge plus for the Cats all season. Kerrigan's quick release catches the blitzing Rough Riders and exposes the middle where McAdoo sprints 30 yards for the touchdown and a 20-8 Hamilton lead. But McAdoo's elation and that of his teammates is short-lived as a result of Saskatchewan's next play from scrimmage. Austin quarterbacking the Riders from the 35. He's throwing a deep pair. Home is out there. He has got it. See you later. Jeff Fairholme, with his father in attendance, has fulfilled a boyhood dream, playing in a Grey Cup game and scoring a Grey Cup touchdown. Austin catches the Tiger Cats in a man-to-man -man defense. Stefan Jordan, the league's top rookie, can't recover in time, and Fairholme, with his lightning speed, brings the Riders within five. It's coming, it's coming. Mike Kerrigan has seen this movie before. In two previous meetings this year, the Riders and the Cats combined for a total of 138 points, an average of almost 70 per game. On second down, Kerrigan again goes to champion. The injured ribs are taped, but the agony remains. From the
the Saskatchewan 48. Derek McAdoo up the middle for eight. McAdoo is a workhorse for Hamilton. His 246 carries this year were the most by any running back. On second down, McAdoo drives for 16 yards, striving for his first cup in his first year, while 14-year veteran Roger Aldag searches for his first. Kerrigan marches right up the field. Two more runs by McAdoo. A 12-yard completion to the sure hands of DiPietro leaves the Tiger Cats a yard away from the goal line. McAdoo gets the call. His second TD gives Hamilton a 12-point lead. Hamilton's powerful offensive line, led by Dale Sanderson and Daryl Harley, open the lane for McAdoo's one-yard plunge. The hungry cats are intent on having dinner. But Gregory won't accept the invitation. On second down, James Ellingson collects 14. These champs make changes in the secondary. With starter Lance Shields right foot on ice, Coach Bruno inserts receiver and special team man Earl Winfield. The riders immediately take notice. Don Narcisse to the Tiger Cats 50. Under two minutes remain in the half. Austin right back at Winfield. This time at slot back Ray Elgar. Winfield is in on the tackle. Gregory's strategy is simple. Work the right side. On first down, Winfield faces the supreme test. Narcisse on a deep pattern outlegs Winfield, but safety Jim Rockford responds with tremendous coverage. It was a sure six points for the Riders. On second down, Austin changes tactics. Ellingson is open over the middle for a gain of 18. Austin's passing game is working, but he's paying a price. From the 16, it's Ellingson again. His third reception of the game. Saskatchewan first and goal from the five. The offense is moving it well in this quarter. This would be the fifth touchdown of this 15-minute period if the Riders can put it in. Narcisse is over. I think they have him in the end zone when the catch was made. Do they or don't they? I thought he was in. Touchdown. The Shields injury has played a factor in all three Saskatchewan TDs. Narcisse beats Winfield to the inside, and the Hamilton lead is cut to five. The Tiger Cats run into more trouble, with time winding down on the half. Rocky DiPietro looks to be in the process of a big gain when his over-exuberance results in a fumble. Vince Goldsmith recovers for Saskatchewan. Time remains for a Dave Ridgway 50-yard attempt. But Ridgway's kick is wide, and Wally Zatilli runs it out to preserve a 27-22 Hamilton lead at halftime. After an intense 30 minutes, the athletes regroup, and the fans listen to Sway. In the first half, Austin completed 12 passes for 220 yards. Kerrigan is 15 of 22 for 207 yards. Jeff Fairholm, the Riders' top receiver, with 97 yards. And Tony Champion, five catches and a TD. Dave Ridgway kicks off to start the second half. Mark Guy gives the Riders great field possession with a return to Saskatchewan's 46. Bruno's defense gave up three TDs in the second quarter, a cause for concern. Gains by Milson Jones and Tim McRae move the Riders past midfield, where Austin hits Elgard for a gain of 11. Good news for Hamilton, though. Cornerback Lance Shields returns and helps snuff out the drive. Dave Ridgway's attempt from 34 yards grazes off the post and through the uprights, slicing Hamilton's lead. The Riders trail by two. 
On second and seven, Kerrigan looks to DiPietro for the first down. Rocky continues to deliver in his fourth Grey Cup appearance. Scrimmage at the Hamilton 45. McAdoo is stopped by Chuck Klingbell from his left tackle position. Forces second and 12. When Kerrigan needs the first down on the clutch play, he usually looks in one direction, Tony Champion's direction. The completion puts Hamilton in field goal range. Saskatchewan halts the drive, and the call goes out to Paul Osbaldiston. From 40 yards, he's good, and Hamilton's five-point cushion is restored. Over 54,000 are in attendance at Toronto Sky Dome. On the kickoff, Mark Guy. An excellent run back to Saskatchewan's 51. On first down, Austin finds Tim McRae on the swing pass for an impressive 17 yard gain. Tiger Cats aren't as generous two plays late. Second and five from the 37. They've got pressure on him and they get him down. The first sack of the game for the Tiger Cats. Daryl Corbin gets it and doesn't it come at a good time. Corbin's sack brings Terry Baker into punt for only the fourth time from Hamilton's 50. Baker angles a beautiful drive to the sidelines. Zatilny can only watch as the ball rolls out at the three. Kerrigan and his Tiger Cats have a long way to go. Kerrigan on first down sends McAdoo off tackle. Bruno talks punting strategy with his kicker while Kerrigan's attempts at progress are stifled. Osbaldiston will punt from 12 yards deep in his end zone. Steve Wiggins charges from the left side, forcing Osbaldiston to wisely concede the safety touch. The two points move Saskatchewan to within a field goal. After the kickoff, the Riders take full advantage. Second and eight. No way, Lance! Narcisse, one man to beat. He's still going. Don Narcisse in a foot race with Will Lewis, who still doesn't have him. Now out is Don Narcisse at the 23 yard line. At five foot nine inches, he's certainly not the biggest receiver in the league, but he's certainly one of the quickest. Austin finds the seam in Hamilton's defense, and Narcisse does the rest. The completion covers 52 yards. The Riders waste little time. On first down, Austin rolls right and looks to the end zone. Ray Elgard is there, but so is pass interference from rookie Sonny Gordon. Forward pass interference. Hamilton 18 in the end zone. First down. The penalty against Gordon gives Saskatchewan three tries from the one. The call goes to McRae. The Tiger Cat front meets him at the goal line, but McRae's forward progress gives the Riders the lead for the first time. Hey, Bob, let's go, let's go. Well, now, I was to the right, and they played, they played it like our strength was to the, you know, to the right. I was going to audible back out, but... 64 points have been scored, and the third quarter has yet to end. The defense picks up the pace. Eddie Lowe brings down McAdoo. And Frank Robinson stops McRae. Go D! Kent Austin's bionic arm checks back into the game. First it was Fairholm for 75 yards. Then Narcisse for 52. And now it's Mark Guy with a dazzling 53-yard reception. The league's top passing unit is in fine form, much to the dismay of Al Bruno. Saskatchewan threatens from Hamilton's 22. Last play of the third quarter, Austin a swing pass to McRae. After three 
three quarters. Saskatchewan 34, Hamilton 30. Austin runs into trouble to start the last quarter. Ronnie Glenn, normally a reserve lineman, drops the quarterback for a loss of nine. Then an incompletion sends a frustrated Austin to the bench. Dave Ridgway tries to build the rider lead. 25-yard field goal attempt by Dave Ridgway is good. And the Riders now lead by seven points. For Hamilton, though, that means that one play can bring them even. Less than 15 minutes remain. It's the final game. As any coach knows, anything can happen. Hamilton had the ball uh, about eight minutes more than Saskatchewan in the first half. It's not that way in the second half, and the Caps would like to hold on to this ball and make some first downs. Four touchdowns. Oh, and it goes over to Suter, and the Riders, they don't hold on to it very long. The teams give up back-to-back -back interceptions, a sure sign of the mounting pressure. The Tiger Cats need seven points to tie, but that's of no interest to the Riders' defense. Kerrigan is forced from the pocket and is finally corralled by Chuck Klingbell. Klingbell's second sack of the game is good for 20 yards. Osbaldiston's punt from the end zone leaves Saskatchewan in good field position at Hamilton's 42. But the Ticat defense takes the cue. Nine-year veteran Grover Covington contains Austin for a loss of nine. But more importantly, the sack moves the Riders out of field goal range. Less than 10 minutes remain before a new champion is crowned. Baker will try to keep the Tiger Cats deep in their end. Hamilton, in search of field position, tries the reverse. Winfield to Gordon. The trick play works. Gordon fights his way into Ryder territory. Gordon at age 23, and Bob Poley, 10 years his senior, would dearly love their first Grey Cup rings. Starting from Saskatchewan's 50, Kerrigan goes over the middle to Lee Knight. Knight makes his first catch count. The gain is 16. On the next play, Kerrigan feels the heat from his backside. Saskatchewan records their third sack. An excited Gary Lewis forces third down. Osbaldiston will try a long field goal attempt. 47 yards. It's good. He is four for four today. Paul Osbaldiston happy. The Cats get closer. Kent Austin has repeatedly proven himself in this game. Over 380 yards in passing and still half a quarter to go. Austin's not content. The Tiger Cats only trail by four points. It's no secret as to what his game plan is. A quick pass to James Ellingson picks up the first down. The former Richmond Raider comes right back. Ellingson with his fifth catch of the game takes the ball to Saskatchewan's 52. Austin then sends Don Narcisse on a down and in pattern. A swarm of Tiger Cats limit the game to 15. The message is clear. McRae gets a first down, and then Elgard in tight traffic picks up another. concentration remains intact even without the proper footwear. A Milson Jones run leaves the riders with second down from the 15. Mark Guy from the left side runs a post pattern, but veteran cornerback Will Lewis is there first. Lewis almost had his second interception of the game. 
The play with Lewis juggling the ball is ruled incomplete. Austin's 10 play 61 yard drive doesn't result in a touchdown, but it does work the clock. Ridgeway is good from 20 yards up. Gray Cup trophy makes its way to the playing surface. Mike Kerrigan scrimmages the Cats from their own 35. A patient, experienced professional, Kerrigan works the short game. First, a pass tonight for a gain of 18. Then, with less than two minutes remaining, a pass to the far side. DP Epro stretches for a pickup of nine. Hamilton's two regular season wins over the Riders mean nothing at this point. McAdoo gets the first down. It's time now to go for the works. He's going deep for Champion, and there is no flag as Champion appeared to be hauled down. The questionable call has Bruno incensed. Champion running his patented post corner goes to the ball. Skipper appears to get in the way. A disbelieving Bruno voices his disapproval, but the call stands. On second down, Kerrigan goes the other way. There's no dispute this time. Earl Winfield is screened by rookie Steve Wiggins. The call gives Hamilton a chance to tie the game. They'll have three shots at it. From the 11 yard line with 113 to go. McAdoo, not much. Maybe to the nine. The Ryder defense plays tough. Hamilton trailing by seven gets another chance on second down. Kerrigan, oh, he has no receiver. He's still on his feet. He throws it for the touch. No, DPM throw. I thought he had it. A clutch move by Wiggins forces third down. Under a minute remains. The entire season rests on this one play. No, no. Up. Yes. It's a play rehearsed and rehearsed many times over in practice. A timing play. Kerrigan throws the ball to a position on the field, and Champion has to get there. Many feel the Champion's catch was the greatest catch in Grey Cup history. is quite likely the greatest Grey Cup game ever played. Tony Champion, playing with what will later be diagnosed as broken ribs, brings the Cats to within a point. The all-important convert is good, and with 44 seconds remaining, the game is tied. Kent Austin takes heed to the coach's advice. Second down from the 36. Austin sidelines. Elgard waits for it, catches it, and he goes out at midfield at the 54 with 25 seconds left. The Riders aren't playing for overtime. Their time is now. They need a first down, and then Ridgeway can try to win it. Dave Ridgeway waits. Austin picks up insurance yardage. Mark Guy, another 10 yards. <laughs> the
The rest is up to this man. They have called him at various times this season Robo Kicker. He has the CFL single season record for field goals, 55 of them. He'd give you all of those to make this one. Glenn Suter holds 35 yard line. The kick. Ways field goal gives Saskatchewan an incredible 43-40 victory, the highest scoring Grey Cup game in history. Prior to last season, Saskatchewan suffered through 11 seasons of humility. Not once during that time did they qualify for postseason play. Their time had finally come. The dream of champions was now a reality. It's Saskatchewan's first Grey Cup victory since 1966. Saskatchewan fans, that legacy will be shared with new heroes. The 1989 Grey Cup was one of the most exciting championship finals ever played. Yes, 1989 certainly was a season to remember.
fantastic. <laughs>